this is not um, the Friedkin's project. Uh, this is not Jose Mourinho project. This is not uh, Thiago Pinto project. This is Roma project. A club is what a club is in general. And I know well what Roma is. I know the fans, I know the passion. Hopefully success arrives with me uh, because the contract is a three years contract. Uh, or my first contract with AS Roma. Maybe there is a second uh, one day. So I hope that uh, the results of, of our work will come during my time. I really want that to happen. Hello everyone, welcome along to the start of a brand new series here on the channel. I'm Ash, aka Brommer, and if you're new to, this, to the channel, welcome along. Really, really excited for this. This is our AS Roma, Jose Mourinho, Realistic Master League Rebuild. So what do we mean by realistic exactly before we get into it? So I'm really going to go into detail about that very soon, but but at its most fundamental core, realistic, we're talking about transfers, we're talking about tactics, we're talking about philosophy, we're talking about money, everything comes into play here. We want to keep this as realistic as possible. Now, as you can see, we have started as Jose Mourinho in the game. And if you didn't know, we will be using mods in this Master League. I am playing on PC. We're going to be using the Virtua Red mod, which means that we've got all the stadiums in the game, lots of different gameplay um, changes, features, chants from the crowd, etc. All sorts, lots of changes to the interface as well. And also, we have the Master League mod as well. Um, so it means that there'll be better youth teams, better development. There's been changes to um, player overall ratings and stuff as well. But overall... Um, you know, this is something I'm really excited for. As you can see on the screen, we have our meetings with the board, etc., about objectives. Currently aiming for a Champions League spot. I think that's very fair. Obviously, Roman looking to push into the top four after having missed out on it um, last season uh, and end up in the Europa Conference League, the newly formed Europa Conference League. So they're very much looking to bounce back and they want to do that under Jose Mourinho. Some notes about the series overall. For any of you who have watched any of my previous career mode or Master League series, you'll know that it took us quite a while to get through each season. It would really take us maybe about 15 to 20 episodes to get through a season now what i want to do this time around is i want to really try and condense that a little bit more we want more matches in games we want more highlights in games and get through more games per episode as possible so we really want to decrease the, the amount of episodes it takes to get through a season because we want to try and progress as much as possible these are the settings that we'll be working with as you can see here we try to try again try and make it as realistic as possible we wanted harder negotiation difficulty we wanted less transfers we started off with a small budget we'll talk about that very soon as well um obviously not playing on legendary difficulty i can't say i'm quite as good as some of the other youtubers out there such as you know spoonie or the true brits etc really what you know, my master league series has and what i feel like you know is good for you guys to, to watch is what we've alluded to already sort of philosophy transfers tactics you know building with an idea and trying to keep it as realistic as we possibly can that's really um, the sort of direction I want to go in and the area I'm coming from here as you can see, we did have our press conference as well, and I tried to do it in true Mourinho fashion, talking about how I wanted to see the team play hard and really put their their, their bodies on the line um, as much as possible, very much a Mourinho style. And that's something you're going to see throughout the course of the, uh, the series as a whole. So here we are on the main menu, as you can see. And we've really got a lot to get through in this episode. Now, I'll start off by saying that we're not going to be playing a game in this episode today. Um, that will come episode two onwards. The reason being is that we've just got a lot to get through and I really want to do some um, sort of errands, really, I guess you could say. We're going to go through the likes of tactics, transfers, etc. I'm going to explain why we're going to be 
doing it as realistically as we possibly can as well. We're going to be doing that Mourinho mould that we're, we're going to get into. And we'll have a look through the transfer window as well, um, going through to see if there's anything incoming, incomings or outgoings as well. So first things first, let's talk about tactics and how we're going to be doing it in the style of Jose as much as we possibly can. Now, we know what Jose is like. You know, he's a very pragmatic manager. He's got this slightly unfair reputation about parking the bus. Now, it's not necessarily like that. Yes, he does like to play with, let's say, mid blocks, not quite low blocks. He likes to play in the mid block. He likes to protect his defence as much as possible. Um, we don't see him going gung ho. Very rarely does he, or if at all, play something like a 4 4 2. Um, often you'll see what you can see on screen a 4 2 3 1. That's how he started off at Roma as well. He's, he does it pretty much everywhere he goes. And that's what we're going to be going with as well. As you can see here, this is currently the tactic we've got. This is the, the first day. So, we haven't even got to the game yet. This could all change. But this is very much what I'm going to be looking for throughout the season. We're going to be looking at the 4-2-3-1. Um, and it's very much going to be about protecting the defence. So I'll give you a quick breakdown of the tactics, actually, because they're all pretty much um, sorted out. As you can see here, um, it's a, a base 4 2 3 on, But we do have a little change here. And this is going to depend on the team we play. Now, we know about Mourinho. He likes to adapt depending on the opposition. That's what he does. He's a tactician. You know, he will change the team, the personnel, the setup, depending on who they're playing against so if for example we're playing a team who are lower down in the league we expect to beat you might see me go with this where we've got one defensive midfielder and then one central midfielder because i want that more box-to-box -box player vera 2 is a great example of someone who can play that role lorenzo pellegrini as well i do have him attacking midfield in this um situation but he can play as that box-to-box -box midfielder as well or let's say we're playing someone like Juve or one of the Milans, etc. Um, Lazio, Atalanta. Then we might decide to change this back to defensive midfield. Now that's just one example. There are many. But um, that sort of thing that we will be looking at. Elsewhere you can see at the moment I've got the wingers as right and left midfielders. Rather than actual right and left wingers. Um, so we'll see how that one plays out. I had a little bit of trouble with that sort of in Pez in general really so again we're going to see how that one plays out but we want these to be tracking back as much as possible because again that's the Mourinho mold isn't it um, looking at the tactics attacking instructions we've got possession game and that's because what you'll see in a Mourinho team predominantly is they will look to play out from the back um, in particular on a goal kick players will come short and they'll look to try and play through the thirds however you'll see in the build up we've got long pass and that's where you're going to get the emphasis on the counter-attack, what Mourinho's teams are known for majorly, really, throughout his entire reign as a manager. Sort of that deadly counter-attacking or having a target man, in this case, Tammy Abraham, who I'm really excited to use as well. Um, looking to play it to him and then play off him. So we've got that good mixture here with possession game and then long pass. Attacking area, we've got it out wide. Again, we're going to be looking to get crosses into the box, utilising that target man, utilising the tall players that we have. Zaniolo as well. So what, 6'2", six, 6'3", six, coming in off the wing. That, that could be deadly, absolutely deadly. Positioning, maintain formation. Again, Mourinho, he doesn't want that flexibility. He wants players to stick to a rigid tactical shape. And then support range, this is nice way in the middle at five as well. Moving on to the defensive side, we've actually got frontline pressure here, and that's because... Again, Mourinho teams, nice and varied, nice and balanced. This can change, again, depending on the opposition. But let's say, for example, in the first game of the season, they had Field and Dina. You saw them pressing a little bit more. Um, now, obviously, they would um, switch between a press and more of a, a back-away block during the game. Um, they would switch between and they would, they would have that variety. Um, but we're gonna, we've got this on frontline pressure in this instance. But like I say, this can very much change. That's come the majority of things in these tacticians, really. That is, that's the Mourinho way, isn't it? Uh, containment area, shift them out wide. And that's going to um, play into, well, defensive compactness, really. Mourinho teams, the best defensive teams, really. They are narrow. They're compact. They don't want the teams playing through them. They have to force them going um, out wide. Pressuring, we got that on conservative. He doesn't have his players stepping out, if at all, aggressively. He wants them um, to play kind of that safe as possible, really. 
um, and then defensive line again we spoke about this the mid block we have this on five and you've got a nice mid block as well with the advanced instructions centering targets again we've just alluded to it that's where you're going to have players running to the box because you, you're trying to score from crosses, etc. With the likes of Zaniolo, Abraham, you're going to have a boxer box mid there as well. Vera too, maybe Pellegrini getting into the box. And that's how they're going to target um, opposition teams. With attack two, you'll see this says defensive. And for any of you who don't know, that's where when you select it, a player that you pick will then not push forward in attack. And in this case, we've put picked Matthias Vigne. Now the reason why is that in every Mourinho team what you will notice is that he likes one fullback to stay back at all times to offer that protection that he values so much. So what you'll find is when one fullback overlaps and goes forward the other fullback will stay back and they will then create a, a back three essentially um, and in this case it's Matthias Vigne against Fiorentina again Karstol you saw going forward a lot more Vigne who's better in that sort of defensive area of the game compared to going forward he stayed back as that sort of third center back essentially and this is perfect this instruction is absolutely perfect to, to recreate that so that is really really handy and then just one defensive instruction swarm the box where you're going to get as much players as possible just getting bunching into the box to really protect the goal as much as possible so yeah that's it for the tactics you know like we say we're just trying to make it as realistic as possible as i'm going to keep saying um trying to build it in that Mourinho way yes it is it's pragmatic but it's also about adapting to the opposition and you'll see lots of that throughout the course of this series really now with transfers again look and get it from a Mourinho perspective and this is where we try and really implement that realism you know we want to sign players that we know Jose Mourinho would target so for example strikers I mean we've already got one here who they've just signed for you know, a lot of money in Tammy Abraham, so we don't really need to target that. But we know he likes his target men. You know, when he has wingers, he prefers pacey wingers, but most importantly, he wants wingers with high fitness, high stamina levels who are going to track back and work as hard as possible. Central midfielders, he likes those big bodied, aggressive midfielders. We saw him go and sign Hjoibjerg, for example, at Tottenham, and he often played him and Sissoko. Um, as the two central midfielders those again big bodied aggressive central midfielders here he's got the likes of Cristante he's got Vera too could do a little bit of him improving in that front um, we saw him trying to target Granite Xhaka now I'm hoping they don't sign him because I would really not want to sign him and if they do in this transfer window we will probably have to that's another thing we should say as well. If Roma do sign anyone in the remaining bit of the summer transfer window um, then we will sign them um, just try and keep it as realistic as possible of course if you're watching this down the line after the summer transfer window this won't be relevant to you so don't worry at all but you'll just see it unfold as the uh, the series goes on another thing that i forgot to mention is this man leonardo spinazzola obviously a fantastic player um can't wait to use him now of course, some of you may know that he does have a long-term injury that he picked up in the Euros, and he's out till November, December at the minimum. So as a result, in order to keep it as realistic as possible, I will not use him and not play him until we reach about November, December time, and then we'll put him in. So in the meantime, we'll have Matthias Vigne, and uh, we'll also have Calafiori as well, who I'm really excited to use because this guy is going to be, oh, he's just going to be, top absolutely fantastic really high potential player um so again we'll uh, we'll go through with that now i've already alluded to the fact that obviously barring any real life signings i don't want to be um signing any players in this summer transfer window because you have to remember that roma has spent a lot of money in real life already in the summer transfer window they're one of the top five spenders in the world football so you have to remember that particularly in a pandemic affected transfer market there's not a lot of money about so we don't really want to be spending more money because we want to keep it as realistic as possible again so we want to try and go with what we've got we'll reevaluate when it comes to january and see what's going on there but yeah barring any real life signings probably not any incomings as for outgoings however there will be, hopefully, a couple. Um, if we go through here, and I'll show you who I've transfer listed. Robin Olsen is one I've transfer listed. Just don't see the point of keeping him, really. He's, he's taken up a wage. Um, 
as you can see here, he's on nearly 60,000, which is just obscene amounts of money for a backup goalkeeper. No interest in that whatsoever, particularly when keepers on this just don't get injured. I mean, outfield players don't really get injured, do they? So keepers are definitely not really going to get injured. So we'll just go with Fazato as well in the background. I have no problem with that. Um, elsewhere, who else have we transfer listed if I uh, have a look here? Pastore with transfer listed. Now, I'm half tempted just to try and release Pastore. And the reason being is that in real life, Pastore is on an obscene wage. Like, absolutely obscene. I'm pretty sure it's like 200,000 plus. If it's not 200,000, it's, you know, high 100,000 mark. Um, and that's why they just can't shift him. They can't get rid of him. No one will pick up his wages. And they don't want to be paying a portion of it if he's not even going to be at the club. So they just can't get rid of him. So I'm ha I am half tempted just to release him for realistic purposes. We'll see how that one goes. You guys let me know. Elsewhere, Tellar with uh, transfer listed as well. Um, you know, just not really going to be of use to me. Fazio, not a fan of Fazio at all. Never rated him. And, um, you know, I'm going to try and shift him out as quickly as possible. I get he's an experienced player and a leader. We'll find other leaders. Um, so, you know, I just want to get rid of him as quickly as possible. If you look elsewhere, Steve, Steven Nzonzi. Now, this is a strange one because in real life, he's trying to they're, he's trying to leave. They're trying to get rid of him. But he's actually a Mourinho-type player. You know, we just spoke about those aggressive central midfielders, those defensive midfielders. He really fits into that mould. But for some reason... It's just not going to happen. So we've put him on the transfer list again for realistic purposes and we'll see how that one really plays out. Elsewhere, Chorich as well. Put him on the transfer list. Don't see him getting any minutes really. I think his development time is probably over at you know, nearly 24 years old. So we'll see how that one plays out as well. Got a couple of players on the loan list as well, such as Providence, etc. Uh, we'll try and keep an eye on air development and just see how that one plays out. One thing in particular I do want to pick up on here is that Again, talking about this whole Mourinho mould, one thing that Mourinho teams have been built on, all the successful Mourinho teams have been built on over the years, is that of a strong centre-back pairing. You know, we look at the likes of Chelsea, both spells, first spell, you know, you had the likes of Terry and Carvalho, second spell, you had Terry and Cahill, and then when he went to Inter Milan, um, you know, Walter Samuel, and then they go out and sign Lucio as well. And you've got these really strong centre-back pairings, and that's something that... At Tottenham, for example, and at Man United as well, he tried to fix that. He wanted to target that area, but the clubs just couldn't manage it. They didn't do it. And that's something we should really look at here. Now, we've got Mancini. Big, big fan of Mancini. He's going to be a part of my long-term planning. Elsewhere, though, in terms of his partner, is Chris Smalling the man? I'm not really sure. We've got Ibanez as well. So there's a couple of players there who maybe can take up the the mantle and... and hold the ship I guess but that's a, an area just to keep an eye on with the scouting obviously we're not really looking to sign players as I said but we are keeping an eye on it for future transfer windows just looking at a couple of wingers really I'd like to sort of get get early on that get in on that and we'll see how that one plays out obviously we've got Mkhitaryan and we've got Zaniolo but you know, there's part of me wants Zaniolo really to be in the middle and drop Pellegrini back as the central midfielder. And Zaniolo can be the number 10. And in which case, we'd need a right mid as well. Um, elsewhere, we're light on the winger positions anyway. We've got El Shirawi hanging around as well and Mkhitaryan. But other than that, not a lot. So that's sort of an area that I would like to look at. In terms of the training, I won't go through it in too much depth here. Um, just have a look through. I've, I've identified all the players and looked at where, where I want them to improve and also where I feel they'll need to improve for the tactics and for the philosophy that we are going to sort of employ here. So you'll see some of them the likes being on defensive fullback, destroyer, etc., box to box, quite common ones, just trying to build the stamina, trying to get their sort of defensive stats up as much as we possibly can. Um, and yeah, really, something that I'm looking forward to seeing how they develop. Um, we can sort of put that into the next topic now um, and how the mods that I'm using for example the Master League mod 
that I'm using, and hopefully I remember to leave a link to these in the description, by the way, will improve development. And, you know, it really does, does build upon that. So hopefully we'll see players develop at a more realistic and faster rate than what we do normally in PES. With the other mod, the Virtual Red mod, as you can see, lots of changes it makes. In the game, you'll really notice it. Uh, but elsewhere, you see that all the writing isn't in capital letters now, which does look better, looks cleaner. Um, the menus get a a boost as well things along those lines obviously we got all the real fixture list and stuff teams the rosters updated etc all of that's really good stuff um little touches here like you'll see the youtube banner come up occasionally in the um there we go We've got the uh, the youtube section there on the front screen so all sorts of stuff like that really um just lots of quality of life improvements that i think is really going to help you guys enjoy it as much as possible so it turns out we do have a few transfer offers we're about midway through the transfer window so far just really going to sim it up to the first game um, so we'll get some of these transfers dealings out of the way really so we've had an offer for Chris Smalling 13 million from Valencia he's valued at 15 million I'm actually going to turn this down um, because I don't really want to upset the apple cart too much I weren't looking to sell Smalling I want to give him the opportunity as well as Ibanez to see who is going to be that partner for Mancini so we are going to um, reject that offer we do also have a couple of offers for other players as well one is Federico Fazio 810,000 from Munch and Gladbach. I'm just going to accept that. I just want to get rid of him. I don't want him at the club in any capacity. So I'll be very, very happy to get him off the board elsewhere. We've also had a loan offer for a Providence as well from Spezia. I'm actually going to reject this one because I don't think he's going to be playing for them often enough i would prefer him to go to a Serie b side if possible so i am going to hold off and risk us getting another offer for him for a team that i feel would be better for his development so we are actually going to reject that one another thing that i should also mention for this master league mod is that it does um rejig the youth teams as well so actually as you'll notice you've got a lot of youth players here who are actually from teams all around the world in addition it does also promote youth players who are in the youth teams in real life into the actual squads on the game um, now you might notice a couple of names here for example rogers here i'm pretty sure that's the same rogers who plays for man city I think he's going out on loan somewhere can't remember where now annoyingly pretty sure it's a championship team but he's very very highly touted there'll be a few here who you guys probably recognize but we're going to keep an eye on this you guys sort of just let me know what you think about that if possible i'd really appreciate that whether you think it would be good to promote these guys or because of the fact that they're actually not at Rome in real life where I should just give that a miss and try and just form my own new team I'd, I really would appreciate that so we have had a couple more offers we've had one for Rui Patricio now obviously they've just signed him in real life so um I'm not going to accept that offer that pretty pretty easy one obvious one really we also had one for Chelar as well 468,000 um, because it's only a, a couple of hundred thousand, we have to remember we are in a um, reduced pandemic infected mar transfer market as well. So I'm happy just to get him off the books really because you know he's not going to be part of my plans at all. I don't mind missing out on a couple of hundred thousand there for realism purposes. So it turns out we have reached the first game of the season now as i've already said i'm not going to play it in this episode really what we wanted to do here was just set the scene for the rest of the series but don't worry this episode or episode two should i say will be out pretty soon after so do keep an eye out for that um, i really hope you guys are excited for this series as i am really getting into it like i say we're going to try and pack a few more games into each episode to really get through the season a little bit quicker but try and get as much content as we can as possible um please do leave your suggestions in the comment section for anything in the series any well, any transfers and stuff or tactics but also just any sort of improvements if you that you want to see maybe to the the production or the, the quality etc do let me know in the comment section and i will really do appreciate that please do leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel as well so that you get regular notifications ring the bell to make sure that that happens give me a follow on twitter if you haven't done so already the link to that is in the description and on that note we're going to finish it off there so until episode two i will see you next time Come on,